Hi guys, welcome to electronics to the point. In this video, let us see how a two cavity crystalline amplifier works for microwave frequencies. Okay, we may get doubt that why don't we use a conventional amplifiers, a conventional in the sense common emitter, common base, common collector. Why don't we use the amplifiers for the amplification purpose? The reason is for low frequencies we can use the amplifiers amplifier is nothing but to strengthen the input signal given right when the signal is transmitted obviously it the signal strength gets decreased so we use the amplifiers if you use conventional amplifiers around kilohertz or megahertz it's fine but when the microwave frequency is coming to picture they are, they are called millimeter waves right these are they are of high frequency when we give the high free such high frequencies to the input of amplifier the circuit gets burnt so for microwave frequency we need to design note this point we need to design a structure so that it can hold the microwave frequencies so we have gone for crystalline amplifiers two cavity crystalline amplifier we can we can use multi cavity crystalline also the not, the operation is same for if you use multi cavity crystalline in the sense here we have two cavities right one two in multi cavities we use we use one two three four uh, many okay the ultimate aim is to increase the strength of the input signal okay now let us see the operation and construction first construction and the operation of two cavity crystalline amplifier okay first we have the circuitry of two cavity crystalline amplifier see the voltage is connected with the negative terminal as input as we give the electrons at the input see we give the electrons at the input and the positive terminal is connected at the output see okay the main principle the main principle of two cavity crystalline amplifier is the conversion of velocity modulated electron beam to current modulation and obtaining high power gain okay from the large beam currents in the catcher cavity c understood electron is velocity modulated in the two cavity crystalline amplifier okay this is the main aim the velocity modulated electron beam when travels through drift space at the catcher cavity the electron beam gets ac current is produced over here due to oscillations and the ac current is taken out okay the power gain is also too high for, for the by using this two cavity crystal amplifier so how do we get that thing we see okay first see the circuitry the input given to the negative terminal of the voltage source and the collector output is taken at the positive term. see first when the negative terminal is connected to the input of two cavity crystal amplifier the electron beam enters electron is of negative charge right it enters these two are focusing electrodes magnetic ones because electrons have the nature of dispersions it may go in random directions okay to avoid that we are placing two electrodes sorry magnetic focusing electrodes okay so that electron beam does not diverge or uh, disperse in random directions so that it can go in a particular direction okay now the action starts here see rf input is given to the first cavity this is called buncher cavity buncher cavity has two grids okay and this is called catcher cavity it's at the output side these two has two grids now let us see the what's ha what happens at the buncher cavity when the rf input is given rf is nothing but radio frequency signal is given radio frequency voltage signal is given to the buncher cavity what this does you know at the buncher cavity here when the rf input is given this induces the voltage we give an RF input voltage, right? RF input. It is the sinusoidal in nature. So the sinusoidal nature, what it does, it creates oscillations. Due to that, 
here voltage is induced see here electron is traveling 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 with the first by the source determined velocity it is traveling now the electron comes here due to the induced voltage it gets boost from the rf input right here it induced voltage right here it travels with the velocity of light okay as fast as uh, velocity of light okay now the electron traveling here through the drift space and see this drift diff, near the drift space when it enters the catcher cavity see now electron has got some uh, sides to choose right here it doesn't have it's a glass tube it goes straight and now it got some uh, cavity space so what the electron does is it oscillates due to that in this catcher cavity the oscillations are sustained these oscillations as this electron is charged particle due to that as traveling in a particular direction and in certain area of cross section so the charge get converted into current see the current the current is uh, ac type of current okay oscillations the current is uh, they, we get the current in the form of ac this is taken out in the form of rf output the catcher cavity takes out and the remaining left over electron beam will be connected to the collector and it gets into the source okay and it gets stored now let us see the this is the operation now let us see in detail what happens see what is the principle we, we have seen till now the electron beam has to be velocity modulated by the RF input and this electron beam when traveled through the drift space and it due to the catcher cavity the oscillation sustained and current is taken out the AC current is taken out right for every see the electron charge was slight it was slow right low charged electron we have we have given low charged electron then due to RF input see due to this rf input the low charged electron which traveling with some specified determined the velocity of uh, source this got the rf induced voltage made electron to move faster with the greatest strength and we got the rf output the current output see what happened the strength got increased right so the main operation of amplification has been done right now see let us see the operation of the two cavity crystalline through applicate diagram actual operation what's going on that is what's going on in the crystalline amplifier we can see through applicate diagram okay see we have considered let us this be the rf input given i told you it's a science oral, right now we are considering three places a dash b dash c dash b dash c it is zero right zero it is in positive peak and negative peak right see this b dash is zero this is considered this position is considered for reference electron and c dash for late electron a dash for early electron see what are this late electron ele uh, reference electron early electron we see it now this is see this is this spot is the bunching spot what we get is at last this all three electrons maybe late early reference electron this all get bunched when the when we get uh, output see this velocity modulated and electron or electron beam gets bunched bunching is nothing but at a point see full with the full strength we receive by bunching okay now let us see what happens when the rf input given at the buncher cavity the voltage induced right the what does the voltage do to this electrons reference electron early electron late electron to see the operation let us take see 
the effect of RF input generated AC voltage across gap A. Gap A is the bunching cavity is there, right? The the space in between the two grids is called gap A. See when considering the early early electron. What is the early electron? When electron entered into the crystal amplifier rf when rf input not given no this point when rf input not given at the time the electron travels with uh, its specified velocity right and due to that the electron with it does not get affected by any voltage uh, induced voltage right as there is no in rf input see the electron if it goes normally and gets into the collected at the anode let us consider that as a reference electron the electron which which was not influenced by the rf input consider as reference electron see without any at point b dash in applicate diagram has the rf ac voltage zero as i have said so electric field across gap a is zero that is electron passes through gap a without any effect by input voltage let this electron be reference electron see b dash point this is the voltage ac voltage rf input ac voltage zero consider this electron reference electron okay now let us see what are this early electron and late electron what is the effect of rf input on this early and late electron okay now see at point c what happens due to this rf input voltage at this instant electron will leave the gap a later reference electron that is er called late electron see when the reference electron went away the late electron see reference electron already went and the electron follows right electrons are nothing but free flow it goes when uh, in the back ends continuously first reference electron gone then next one is the later one right that is the late electron as a reference electron gone first before the after the reference electron will be the late electron and before the reference electron will be the early electron right see this late electron when the el reference electron moves what happens this electron gets subjected to maximum positive rf voltage why when the reference electron went away now input is actuated okay input is what rf input ac voltage right due to that rf ac what happens it's a positive input rf ac voltage the maximum positive voltage is induced in the buncher cavity it moves with a velocity of light and it tries to overtake the reference electron okay and now see what happens at point a dash that is at early electron what happens to the early electron hmm. okay early electron is nothing but the electron which went before reference electron itself see that reference that early electron what happens to it is we know from the diagram what we can say see the input is negative terminal given to negative terminal right in the sense it is negatively charged negatively char negative area so first the negative field is induced in the input right okay due to the negative reference negative input we have given to the crystal amplifier what happens at first that is before rf input applied and the reference electron also did not go at that time when the electron l electron went forward at the time the negative field is induced right 
due to that negative field this early electron the poor guy it gets slowed down decelerated it moves slowly now what happens when the early electron when the input is applied and the early ele uh, reference electron also gone the high speed it is coming and late electron it's going slowly so what happens all this late electron reference electron and early electron this all gets bunched this see so this electron fall back and reference electron catches up with the early electron okay thus velocity of electron varies in according with rf input voltage resulting in velocity modulation of electron beam see all these when at last the final distillation uh, when the uh, all three electrons has to reach catcher cavity right at that instant all these gets bunched in the sense to a point they all come to a point they all coming to a point in the sense the strength has been increased at the time due to the ref cavity the electrons with uh, are traveling with high velocity right what happens these all electrons will induce the oscillations in catcher cavity these oscillations are taken out see these oscillations are taken out at the catcher cavity see at the catcher cavity rf output okay these oscillations are current ac current as we know when a charge moves in a length with having cross certain cross section the current is generated right i is equal to dq by dt note this i is equal to dq by dt when charge moving with respect to time in certain area of cross section current is induced the induced current is ac okay see the induced ac current is taken out at the catcher cavity and the remaining electron beam will be collected at the anode this is the operation okay now the important point to be noted is in the two cavity crystalline amplifier rf signal is given at the input right it is constant and this rf signal does not travel with the electron it what it does is the only it induces the voltage in the uh, cavity and it makes electron to travel right whereas in traveling wave tubes these are resonating structures and when we apply for the traveling wave tubes traveling wave tubes are also used for the amplification purpose only but due to its unique feature of uh, electron and rf input interaction it amplifies more much better than due to its due to traveling wave tubes unique feature it retards the electron beam and it makes to interact with the rf input and this rf input and electron beam travels with same velocity so that quite efficient amplification is achieved we will see it later in the next video okay thank you